Okay, so I'm lying in bed feeling kind of icky, and I thought I might as well at least try to do something productive with my time. So, we're going to do a couple of teasers. The downside to this being that the lighting, kind of awful. The angle, kind of awful. And they look like this. Whatever. So, to kick us off, Fallen by Lauren Kate. Look at that beautiful cover. Yeah. This is when Luce first sees Daniel, and he acts like a typical YA guy lately. A total asshole. Ariani noticed Luce's eyes running over the rest of the kids. We all do what we can to make it through the day, she said, shrugging. But in case you hadn't observed the low-hanging vultures, this place pretty much reeks of death. She took a seat on a bench under a weeping willow and patted the spot next to her for Luce. Luce wiped away a mound of wet, decaying leaves, but just before she sat down, she noticed another dress code violation. A very attractive dress code violation. He wore a bright red scarf around his neck. It was far from cold outside, but he had on a black leather motorcycle jacket over his black sweater, too. Maybe it was because his was the only spot of color on the quad, but he was all that Luce could look at. In fact, everything else so paled in comparison that for one long moment, Luce forgot where she was. She took in his deep golden hair and matching tan, his high cheekbones, the dark sunglasses that covered his eyes, the soft shape of his lips. In all the movies Luce had seen, and in all the books she'd read, the love interest was mind-blowingly good-looking. Except for that one little flaw. The chipped tooth, the charming colic, the beauty mark on his left cheek. She knew why. If the hero was too unblemished, he'd risk being unapproachable. But approachable or not, Luce had always had a weakness for the sublimely gorgeous like this guy. He leaned up against the building with his arms crossed lightly over his chest, and for a split second, Lou saw a flashing image of herself folded into those arms. She shook her head, but the vision stayed so clear that she almost took off toward him. No, that was crazy, right? Even at a school full of crazies, Luce was well aware that this instinct was insane. She didn't even know him. He was talking to a shorter kid with dreads and a toothy smile. Both of them were laughing hard and genuinely, in a way that made Lou strangely jealous. She tried to think back and remember how long it had been since she'd laughed, really laughed like that. That's Daniel Grigori, Ariani said, leaning in and reading her mind. I can tell he's attracted somebody's attention. Understatement. Luce agreed, embarrassed when she realized how she must have looked to Ariani. Yeah, well, if you like that sort of thing. What's not to like? Luce said, unable to stop the words from tumbling out. His friend there is Roland, Ariani said, nodding in the dreadlock kid's direction. He's cool. The kind of guy who can get his hands on things, you know? Not really, Luce thought, biting her lip. What kinds of things? Ariani shrugged, using her poached Swiss army knife to saw off a fraying strand from a rip in her black jeans. Just things. Asking you shall receive kind of things. What about Daniel? Luce asked. What's his story? Oh, she doesn't give up. Ariani laughed, then cleared her throat. No one really knows, she said. He holds pretty tight to his mystery man persona. Could just be your typical reform school asshole. I'm no stranger to assholes, Lou said, though as soon as the words came out she wished she could take them back. After what had happened to Trevor, whatever had happened, she was the last person who should be making character judgments. But more than that, the rare time she made even the smallest reference to that night, the shifting black canopy of the shadows came back to her almost like she was right back at the lake. She glanced again at Daniel. He took his glasses off and slid them inside his jacket, then turned to look at her. His gaze caught hers, and Luce watched as his eyes widened, and then quickly narrowed in what looked like surprise. But no, it was more than that. When Daniel's eyes held hers, her breath caught in her throat. She recognized him from somewhere. But she would have remembered meeting someone like him, 
She would have remembered feeling as absolutely shaken up as she did right now. She realized they were still locking eyes when Daniel flashed her a smile. A jet of warmth shot through her, and she had to grip the bench for support. She felt her lips pull up in a smile back at him, but then he raised his hand in the air and flipped her off. Fallen, Lauren Kate.